Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Orlando and today we're talking about these huge myths. There are a lot of myths guys when it comes to real estate about getting into real estate, or should I say, maybe they're excuses. I don't know, you know, some people use them as excuses. Some people say, oh, you know, these are things that I've heard about real estate that just kind of just, well, makes me not want to do it. <laughs> and I get it. And we're gonna go over these myths to kind of let you know, like, look, <laughs> these myths, you, once you get done with this video, watch to the very end, guys. Once you get done with this video, you will understand the reason why real estate can be so powerful, guys. Why it's such a good investment. Why it creates more millionaires than any other type of investment. 90% of millionaires are created through real estate. And when I answer these questions, you will understand why. But before we get into that, I want you guys to know, in the description, I do sell a course on real estate for beginners. So if you are interested in something like that, please go into the description and click the link and get started now. But let's go ahead and start with the myth number one. Myth number one is why do I need to get into real estate? Savings will make me rich. Saving money will make me rich. I don't need real estate. Forget that stuff, right? I watched Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey said, if I just put my money in the savings account and I save, oh, man, I'm gonna become a millionaire. <laughs> And I laugh at that because I promise you guys, saving money and not growing your money, saving money, let me say it again, saving money and not growing your money will not make you wealthy, guys. <laughs> you, you would have to already be wealthy. Just let's think about this. You would have to already be wealthy to save your money to be wealthy. <laughs> that, that blows my mind when people say that. Look, if you want to become wealthy and let's say you have a regular nine to five job and you're making 70, 50 to $70,000, right? 50 to $70,000, you're making that type of money. Let's just say it. I'm not saying you can't do it with anything lower. I'm just using that as an example. So 50 to $70,000 is your salary. Now, if you start saving that money, you start saving that money and let's say you save $20,000 a year and you did that for the next, 10 years, that's $200,000 that you have saved. If you don't have any type of vehicle, let me repeat it, if you don't have any other type of vehicle other than just putting it in a savings account, it will stay at that 200,000. It may actually be less than that using inflation. And most people are like, I need to find a savings account that has the highest interest rate that I possibly can have. And even if you got a, a savings account that had 2%, I mean, it would still get ate up mostly by inflation, especially the way that we're going now in this environment. Who knows how much your money would get ate up into. And so my whole thing is, is that you see that if you take that $20,000, which is a good portion of your $70,000 salary and you do that over 10 years, it's only $200,000 and you will think to yourself, what can I do with that $200,000? Even if you set it for your retirement, it's just not enough money. It really isn't. But the most important thing that we have to understand that for you to become wealthy and for you to become rich or whatever, whatever term that you want to use of having a lot of money, to do that, you have to grow your money, guys. You have to have some vehicle to grow your money. And real estate is by far, by far, guys. That is the reason why 90% of millionaires are made through real estate is the one of the best investments. The tax code is built for it. The passive income, the appreciation that you can get on it. There's a three tier, four tier system that allows you to gain wealth and they each run independently. Tax benefits run independently. Cash flow can run independently. Appreciation runs independently. Can you see what I'm saying? That same $20,000 that you invested into the savings account, if you would put that into real estate, you would have three avenues Three, three avenues to grow that $20,000. And the government protects your investment through the tax code. Where else are you gonna get that? <laughs> but, but hey, let's go on to myth number two. Myth number two is everyone thinks, I get it, I get it, hey, HGTV, right? Everyone thinks that getting into real estate means flipping houses, fixing and flipping houses. And a lot of, people think to themselves and they're scared, I don't know anything about flipping houses. I don't know anything about 
any type of handiwork. They think to themselves, what if I buy a house and the foundation is just ruined? What if I buy a house and the plumbing is like just messed up and it backs up and water is everywhere? What if I buy a structure that is ate up by termites? I don't, I, I don't know how to do any of that. And everyone thinks that you have to go into real estate and buy the most condemned, messed up property to get into real estate because that's what they have seen on TV. And a lot of these reality shows, fix and flip shows, that's what they show. They show individuals buying things at a $60,000 price point, putting $50,000 and then making $100,000, you know, profit. And that seems enticing. So most people believe that is the type of real estate that is available. That's the only way to get into real estate. And that is not the case. There are so many different ways you can get into real estate. You have what I do, which is buy and hold properties. Then you have wholesaling, which you know is whatever. But then you also have fix and flips. Then you have people who do leaseholds and things of that nature. So there's so many different avenues of real estate. You have to figure out which one is best for you. And fix and flips are not the only way. I know they're the probably the most popular way because you've seen it on TV. I will say that most millionaires probably do buy and hold. They don't do fix and flips. I, I mean, I, I totally get fix and flip, but I'm not a handyman either. I'm not an individual who want to manage a bunch of contractors and deal with stuff like that and be able to spot out. I like to hold my properties, get the cash flow off of those, get the tax benefits off of those. And then if I want to sell them, I can, but then push them through 1031s and buy more properties. Like that is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make money off of real estate going that route. And that's what I teach in my courses. That's what I teach on my YouTube videos. But that is a myth that runs very rampant through the, just through in general, through people thinking that real estate is only fix and flips. <laughs> and it's not guys, it's not. So myth number three is people think that they have to quit their job to get into real estate. They think that if I buy a property, oh, I might as well quit my job and it's a full-time job doing this. Let me tell you what, guys. <laughs> Let me blow your mind right now with crushing this myth. It doesn't take that much time to manage properties when you have a property manager. <laughs> <laughs> when you buy your first property, you should always, the way that I teach, the way that I teach is have a property management. I would never, ever, ever, ever suggest that you quit your day job. Keep your day job and have the property management run the property for you, right? You will just collect a check. They will send you emails when there's issues and things need to be fixed. But heck, at the most, at the most, you should probably spend, be spending maybe an hour or two a week on your properties with a property management. You're just sending emails back and forth, and it's not hard work, guys. It's typing the email, you know, and saying yes, no, and you get in a check. Yes, I like this tenant. No, I don't like this tenant. Yes, I approve this fix. No, I don't approve this fix. That's what you're doing when it comes to managing a property. Who does all of the advertising? Who does all of the tenant screening, the background checks, all that stuff? Property management, not you. Who goes out to the property and takes pictures for advertising and all that other stuff? Not you, you're not doing that. Who sets up people to go fix the property? Not you, the property management. So you see where I'm going with this? You don't need to quit your good job. <laughs> You don't need to quit your good job to do real estate. That is the reason why real estate is so good, guys. It really is because not only do you get to keep your job while you're doing it and kind of use it as a side hustle, but just because you have a property management running the property, you still get full benefits in the tax code. You still get all of the benefits as if someone was running it full time. It does not matter, guys. So. I just want to crush that myth 
that you guys think that I have to quit my job. You know, as soon as I buy this property, I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna just become a real estate investor 100%. Now, if that's something that you want to do, by all means, go ahead and do it. But I want you to really think about what are the reasons why you're doing that. Is it because you think that all of your time is gonna get ate up and you're gonna have to quit? If that's the case, stop. Don't do it. <laughs> so once again, I hope you got value out of this content. Please watch this next video here. It will help you get into your first rental property and to get into real estate just in general. And please check out my course and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.